Hey, this video is going to show you how to do a hypothesis test for a proportion using Excel. And we're doing this without a sample data set. So you're going to need the number of successes and the sample size for this, and along with the claim and the level of significance. So we'll start with our claim. We've got a claim that cell phone users develop brain cancer at a greater rate than non-cell phone users, and that non-cell phone user rate is 0.0340%. And so that print sent jumps out at me and tells me I'm dealing with proportions. So I'm going to have P for my hypothesis statements. And so this claim is P is greater than, and I got to take that percent they gave me and convert it to a decimal, which means I'm moving the decimal two to the left. So I have to add two zeros in front to get that. So there's my alternative state uh, hypothesis, which is also my claim. And for the null, I'm going to do p equals, and then that same number. Let's uh, copy it up there. And then if I look at this alternative statement, hypothesis statement, the test type is going to be a right-tailed test. That's what a greater than tells me. And because this is a proportion I'm dealing with, I am using the normal distribution. So one of the things that I'm going to need to calculate the p-value is the sample proportion for the successes, or p-hat. And so I'm going to use Excel to calculate that. It's going to be the x-value, 172, divided by the sample size. And there is my sample proportion. Now, I also need the standard deviation, which this formula right here is going to find it for me. And if I look at that, I need P, which is this guy right here, my proportion from the claim. Q, which oh, I haven't calculated that, and N. So I've got everything except for Q. Now Q is always one minus P. And so I'm gonna do one minus, and be careful to use P here, not P hat. This is um, the population that we're dealing with, not the sample. So there is Q, and now I have everything that I need in that formula to find the standard deviation for the sampling distribution. So I'm going to start typing in that formula I see there. So square root is SQRT, and then I take P times Q divided by N, and all of that goes in parentheses because all of it is inside the square root in the formula. And now I have my standard deviation. Now that number looks a little weird because there's an E in there and then a negative five. That is scientific notation, which if you're not familiar with it, that E means times 10 to the negative fifth power. So if I were to actually rewrite that in a standard form, I would have to move the decimal point four to the left, or sorry, five to the left, uh, which means I add four decimal or four zeros uh, to get that into a standard form. So. So that's what that number looks like in standard notation. Now luckily we don't really care too much for this because we're just using that for another calculation. Okay, so this is a right-tailed test, but I'm gonna go ahead and calculate left, right, and two-tailed, and then you can just, once you create this, you can just reuse it on every problem and change the numbers. So for a left, um, for each one of these, I'm doing p-value, so that means I'm gonna use, uh, I'm looking for the area under the curve. And so that's norm.dist, just like we were using uh, in the last section. So I'm going to start typing that in for my left. Remember, this uh, formula always gives me the area to the left, so this is going to give me the left tail. Now, this formula has helped us a lot in the past. It kind of messes up here because we're not really dealing with x, uh, mean and things like that. So what I'm actually going to be putting here in place of x, which actually let me... Just do it off to the side here. Let's uh, ah. let's hold off on you for a second and move this over. I'm just gonna kind of type out what needs to go in there, and I'm gonna leave the equals off so it doesn't try and calculate anything. So I need p hat. And we'll put a dash there. I'm not gonna bother with the with the writing. 
that's going to go in place of x, and then p, the population proportion, goes next, and then that standard deviation, which is the sx bar, um, and then a 1 for true. So that is what I need to type in here each time that I do a left tail test for a proportion. Let's come back over here and do it for real with the equal sign. Having trouble typing today. Okay, so p hat first. So right there. Uh, and then p for the population. And then that standard deviation we calculated. And then a 1 or true for that. And there is the p-value if this had been p less than 0 0.00034. So I just found the area to the left of my z-score, which we didn't even find the z-score. Um, so the right tail would just be the other side of that. So the entire area under the curve, which is 1, minus what we just calculated. And so there's the p-value for right tail test. So that's actually my answer for this particular problem. So I could go and straight to my decision rule and conclusion after this. But I am going to go ahead and pretend, well, what if this was a two-tail? How would I deal with that? So if it was a two-tail, um, well, I have the right tail there. So if I just doubled it, then I'd have the tail on the other side that was symmetric or the same size. Um, but sometimes the left tail is going to be the one that's tiny if I was dealing with a z-score that was to the left of the mean. So I'm going to do this like it could be either one. I'm going to take the min of the left and the right tailed p-values and multiply them by 2, so I get two tails. So 2 times, and we learned how to do min in our very first uh, unit in descriptive statistics. So the min of, and I'll choose these two here, and that's going to take whichever one is the smaller of the two and multiply it by 2, so I get both tails. And so there is the p-value if this had been a two-tailed test. For me, though, I'm going to look at this right tail test in the middle and compare that to my alpha. And it turns out it is greater than alpha, okay, which tells me that I fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then I have to look back and say, okay, what does that tell me about the claim itself? Well, the claim was the alternative. And so when the claim is the alternative and I fail to reject, then that means there is not enough evidence to support the claim. And if I was really wanted to be thorough, then I could um, kind of describe that claim here so that the population proportion is greater than 0.0340%. And I have come to my conclusion. <laughs>